We have been talking about how I wash Sobolev class in arbitrary metric measure spaces, the space M1P of X, and we already mentioned that M comes from maximal functions, and the original example that motivated this definition was in the Euclidean space, where through maximal function of the derivative, one finds a high wash gradient for the classical Sobolev uh, functions. I would like at some point to give you some examples of the type of calculations and the type of analytical tools used in obtaining certain results. I don't want to relate to you only abstract results without concrete examples, because then you will have uh, no real examples to compare to, and also it, it can at some point become just some empty abstraction. But to do so, we need to introduce maybe um, some tools from, from uh, harmonic analysis. And uh, we begin with the discussion of the, the extremely famous maximal function of Hardy Littlewood. And uh, I will be following the, the lecture notes uh, by uh, Lectures on analysis, on analysis of metric spaces by Heinonen, so the definitions and, and the specific formulations of the results are following that book, which I really recommend for very nice and uh, clearly written proofs, if you're interested in finding all the details. Let's recall quickly that we say a metric measure space is doubling if measure of each ball is positive and finite, and that for a universal constant C, the measure of balls of twice as much radius are bounded by that constant times the measure of the balls themselves. This is uh, some kind of control that, uh, well, uh, just doubling the radius of the ball doesn't blow up the measure too much. The common notation analysis for integral average of a function over a set is the barred integral. So if you have a set E and a function that is integrable on E, then uh, this notation, this symbol means nothing other than you integrate the function over E, and then you divide by measure of E. And finally, by being locally integrable in being in L1 log, or similarly be being in LP log, means that every point in your space has a neighborhood on which f is integrable. That is, again, definition that I'm following from Heinonen's book. In particular, this would mean that for every x, there is some ball where the integral is finite. OK, so we have also previously talked about this term zero order calculus. And with that, it is intended any type of analysis and analytical tools that do not require a notion of derivative, zero order. So there is not any derivative yet. And already in 70s, there was a lot done in this regard. And the, the, the most famous achievements, probably the most well-known results and commonly used ones, is the Vitali covering theorem that we have previously seen. Uh, it's just about extracting uh, coarser coverings out of uh, arbitrary coverings by balls. There is no notion of derivative involved in that. The hardy littlewood maximal function theorem, the one that we will talk next in this video extensively, and from which, in the following video, in the follow-up video, I will show how the Lebesgue differentiation theorem follows. And this Lebesgue differentiation theorem indeed actually has nothing to do with derivatives, interestingly. Um, I think the terminology is more when, when you differentiate one measure with respect to the another measure, Radon measures in Rn. But... Uh, yeah, anyway, so these are the type of big results that uh, do not require or involve any derivatives. And these are used very, very much extensively 
in, in developing uh, also first order calculus on the spaces. As will be apparent the deeper we go into the theory. So what is this hard little maximal function theorem? Of course we begin with the definition. So x again d mu is doubling, that is very important assumption and also the only one we actually have. Okay, for locally integrable f on x we define. So we define a new function and that is the maximal function of f. If I want to find the value at point x, what I do is I integrate the function, absolute value of the function over ball of x radius r, and I take average, d mu. Remember that the balls have positive and finite, so I can divide by measure of the ball in the denominator. And also notice that by being locally integrable, the way we defined it, this means that for some r, usually small r, this will be a finite value. But what we do is, of course, we want to define only some function that depends on x, so r shouldn't be there, and that is taken care of by taking supremum over all, all positive radii. So for some values of x, this could in fact be equal to infinity. So that is the definition of this, this uh, function. And uh, visually, it's uh, quite simple, so you have your x, and you take a ball of radius r and you look at the integral average of f on this you take other balls and you do this for both large and small r and you look at the extremely largest value among all of this that you consider you can imagine that the maximal function well is quite large it's maximal uh, because you you uh, take supremum over both small radii and big radii. If you happen to know familiar with the Lebesgue differentiation theorem in the Euclidean context already, you can uh, then recall that in the Euclidean case, if you have a locally integrable function and you fix for almost every point x that you pick, uh, if you take integral average over balls, of smaller and smaller radius, this will converge actually to the value of f. So if you have f d mu ball of x r, we're talking about r n, and if you take lim sup as r goes to zero, this will be absolute value of f evaluated at x for almost every x. So the maximal function is larger than also the lim sup when r goes to zero. So in particular, we will see that, uh, so consequence, so this is Lebesgue differentiation theorem in the Euclidean case. The consequence of this will be that at almost every x, exactly these x where the Lebesgue differentiation theorem applies to, the maximal function evaluated at x is larger than the value of f at x. So the maximal function almost everywhere is actually bigger than the absolute value of the function f. So it's again maximal, it's larger. The hardy littlewood theorem is saying that this largeness isn't actually too much in the LP norm sense. So despite defining such a huge function, it is actually a bounded operator taking f to mf does not leave the LP class. So if f is in LP, mf will also be in LP. And famously, this only is true for p strictly bigger than one. So what is the statement of the theorem in this generality? So x d mu, remember the main assumption is that it is doubling.
Then there are two parts to it, uh, which are both equally important. Part one is that if f is in L1 of x, then there exists some constant C1 so that for every t positive, the set of values where the maximal function of f evaluated at x is bigger than t. So this is, uh, yeah, the set of points where maximal function is bigger than some cutoff value t. This set is not too big. So the measure of that is no larger than this constant c1 divided by this t integral of absolute value of f d mu over the whole x. Um, it's very reasonable that when t becomes smaller, you can have only a worse bound, so this t is in the denominator. Because if t goes to zero, then you have all of it, actually. So you have measure of the whole space, almost. And also having absolute value is no surprise because the maximum function is defined through that. And this is usually called a weak type estimate. And the reason being that let's multiply the, the two sides by t, then this becomes t times measure of the set where maximal function is bigger than t is bounded by c1 t norm f, l1 norm of f. And this side is almost, or it's, let's say, similar to integrating the maximal function of f itself. So uh, suppose actually m of mf bigger than t is basically m, mf equal, almost equal to t. Then this becomes integrating mf over part of x where m of f is bigger than t. And uh, that's why it's, it's very similar to as if this is like L1 norm of mf. So if, if that estimate was correct, so you would have that uh, L1 norm of mf is smaller than C1 L1 norm of f itself. But this fails, so only a weaker form is true, which is called weak type estimate. This also has a, another uh, common name in probability statistics theory, which unfortunately I have forgotten. Um, Markov inequality or, or something, sorry about that. Please put that in the comments. Um, but this weak type estimate is actually often uh, sufficient, not only in application, but also in proof of the second part of this theorem. Actually, what you do is you first prove the weak type estimate and then you have the L infinity to L infinity boundedness quite trivially. And then from interpolation, you get that it's true for all P between one and infinity. So what is what am I talking about is this. So if P is bigger than one and F is in LP of X, then Um, there exists C2, so that, okay, uh, I messed these up because I will, it's better to put this first. Uh, of course, the C1 does not depend on F is, is intended. So there exists this universal C2, so that now we can say that the LP to LP, the maximal function is bounded. That means if I look at the maximal function, and look at its LP norm. So I don't really need absolute value, but just to be clear, we put it there because it's a non-negative function. So if I take maximal function of this F and I look at its LP norm, it's bounded by this universal constant times LP norm of the original function. So in term, in language of function analysis, this is saying that 
the operator that takes f to mf, if we give it the name m, is bounded operator from LP to LP. So if you start with LP integrable function and P is bigger than one, then M MF, which we argued Y is a large, much large function, is not that much in the LP sense. So um, these averages kind of balance out. If, if you get really huge averages from some somewhere in the space, then other place is not as big. So you cannot have simultaneously really huge averages everywhere. Okay, and uh, finally the remark is that these constants C1 and C2 depend only on P and the doubling constant, the one which makes a measure of two times ball bounded by C, C D say measure of P, this constant is the doubling constant. So there you go, uh, this amazing theorem and it's proof again First, you prove the weak type estimate by Vitali covering theorem. And uh, then you prove that for P equal infinity, you get some bound, L infinity to L infinity. Well, if function F itself is bounded, the averages are always bounded by the same quantity. So if you, if you have F bounded by 10, the maximal function will always be bounded by 10, no matter if you take big or small balls. So that's also, the other end of the spectrum and uh, the interpolation theorem, if you happen to be familiar with that, gives something strong for all intermediate values here. That, that's, the, that's one of the proofs and maybe the easiest. Okay, so this hardy littlewood function, other than just to analysis on metric spaces, has many applications in many places, in PDE, in statistics, as I mentioned, um, you may check the Wikipedia page related to that. So we already talked about this. We had talked about this Vitali covering uh, before in maybe area or query formula the series. Uh, we mentioned this. So next video, we can talk about what is Lebesgue differentiation theorem in this abstract setting and how it follows very easily, surprisingly easily from the maximal function theorem. Hope this was uh, quite uh, detailed enough. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment. Again, if you want to see complete proofs of these, which everyone has to see in their lives at some point, go to uh, lectures on analysis on metric spaces by Yuha He Noonan or similar textbooks. Thanks a lot. And uh, thanks also for many uh, new subscribers who are making us very close to 500. See you in next video soon.